Welcome to episode 6 of the AliRx Show, starring yours truly. And it is a very special episode because it is the first episode of a mini-series here on the AliRx Show called Retro Month. That's right, folks. Throughout the month of February, I will be reviewing three random classic games from earlier generations of gaming. And the first game I'm going to review for Retro Month is a game that is near and dear to my heart. And that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project, for the Nintendo Entertainment System, based on the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. I have had so many fond memories of this game as a kid, and I still love it till this very day. So how good is Ninja Turtles 3 for the NES? Let's find out! Before I start this review, let's take a brief look at the previous two Ninja Turtles games for the NES. The first Ninja Turtles game was a game where you either loved or you hated. There were some really frustrating moments like the difficulty jumping into certain places, the underwater level, Donatello's weapon being too slow, Raphael and Michelangelo's weapons don't do much damage, and among other issues. But it was somewhat enjoyable and it had a pretty kick-ass soundtrack. All in all, the first Ninja Turtles game was okay. The second one is a port of the arcade game. Both versions, the NES and arcade versions, were really fun beat-em-ups and were a lot better than the first NES game. But, of course, it's not as good as the third one, which I'm about to review right now. So the story begins with the turtles at the beach in Florida enjoying their vacation. Suddenly, a breaking news report happens and Manhattan ends up floating in the sky. And you know, back in the day when I was a kid, I thought that looked pretty fucking cool. <laughs> April O'Neil is then kidnapped by, you guessed it, the Shredder. And now it's up to the turtles to save April and bring back down Manhattan. Now that we got the basic story out of the way, let's get on with the gameplay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 is exactly what you'd expect. A 1 to 2 player side scrolling beat em up with tight controls, unique special moves, tons of different enemies, and overall an incredibly fun game. They made a lot of improvements from the arcade game, and it's a night and day difference compared to the first Turtles NES game. You play as any of the four Turtles of course, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. And unlike the first Turtles game, all of their weapons are equally as effective. In other words, Donatello doesn't move slow when he attacks with his bow, and Raphael and Michelangelo's weapons aren't too small and do a lot more damage. But what makes each turtle unique is their special attacks. You do this by pressing A and B at the same time. Leonardo has a tornado attack, Raphael has the drill attack, Michelangelo has the calf kick, and Donatello has the spinning kick. All of them are very effective. However, you can't use it too much because it drains your health, so only use it during boss fights and occasionally the sub-bosses. And like I said earlier, there's so many enemies. You have different colored foot soldiers, stone warriors, mousers, and tons of others. Bosses and sub-bosses include Rocksteady, Bebop, Tokan Razor from the second Turtles movie. Yes, folks, they actually include movie characters. Villains from specific episodes like Slash, Dirtbag, and Leatherhead, and of course, Shredder and Krang. And if you get far enough, you get to face Kevin Nash, I mean Super Shredder. Unfortunately, he doesn't tear his squad, so you gotta beat him all by yourself, and he is tough as balls. The graphics look awesome for an NES game. The colors look fantastic, there's a lot of detail on the sprites and backgrounds, and all of the characters strongly resemble their TV counterparts. Plus the cutscenes kick so much ass. The music is fucking awesome. All of Konami's NES games have had consistently good music, and this is no exception. My favorite track has gotta be Super Shredder's theme. And the Turtles theme sounds just like the one in the show. I really don't have a whole lot of negative things to say about the game. It has some minor flaws like occasional slowdowns, but they don't really hurt the game that much. I only wish this game had the NES 4 score so you can play as all four turtles with three other friends, 
But then again, not many people gave a shit about that peripheral. So most people were fine with just two players at the time. I used to be annoyed by all the different kinds of foot soldiers attacking me, but when I got better at this game, they never really bothered me. All in all, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project is a true classic. Not only one of the best NES games, but also one of the best licensed games on the NES. With all the shitty licensed games like Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, Friday the 13th, and countless others, TMNT 3 for the NES is one of those great licensed games that truly stand out. I still play this game from time to time and I love it just as much, if not more, than I did as a kid. I give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 a platinum. A sequel came out on the arcade in Super Nintendo and it was called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time. A Sega Genesis version called the Hypersone Hype was also released, but there are major differences compared to the arcade and Super Nintendo versions. All of these games were great follow-ups to TMNT3, and I might review them sometime in the future. So that was my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 for the NES here on the AliRx Show. Now I want your opinion. Did you enjoy this review? Did you agree with it? Did you disagree? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and if you really enjoyed this review, make sure you share it with your friends so that others can enjoy it. Next episode of Retro Month will be on Nights in the Dreams for the Sega Saturn. I'm AliRx, and I tell it like it is.